With Click Data Catalyst, you can deliver purpose-built data sets to data consumers across the business, including data scientists, business analysts, and downstream applications. Let's take a look at how this works. I will show you how we can take what we prepared earlier in Click Data Catalyst and publish it directly to ClickSense. You simply locate the data entities that you want to use from within the Click Data Catalyst catalog and add them to your cart. In this case, I will add the supplier data entity we previously onboarded, as well as the 2017 All Orders entity we previously made using a Click Data Catalyst prepare job. You will notice there are now two entities in my cart. By clicking the Take Action button, there are a few options for me to select. I can take those selected entities and bundle them into a newly created or existing purpose-built data set to be scheduled and published as business-ready data to other platforms, downstream applications, or environments that require clean, integrated enterprise data. I could explore or use them as sources within a new prepared job, or publish them directly to ClickSense. As you can see, the data entities have now been loaded into the ClickSense interface and are displayed as tables, dynamically created in the ClickSense application. You can see that these fields are now available for use by developers and consumers across the business. With Click Data Catalyst, when you onboard data into the marketplace, you do much more than just ingest that data source into the data collection. Under the covers, Click Data Catalyst's onboarding process performs data translation, quality checking, validation, and profiling steps, all aimed at adding an accurate, complete, and thoroughly documented representation of that new data. Let's see how this works by onboarding a flat file of supplier data into Click Data Catalyst from Amazon Web Services Simple Storage Service, better known as AWS S3. Click Data Catalyst includes a set of built-in source data type loaders and wizards that make it easy to add connections for data sources. This includes built-in connectors for flat files, RDBMS sources, JSON files, mainframe applications, XML files, and more. Let's add our new data entity, or table, using the Add Data Wizard. We will add this new set of data to an existing data source connection which has been previously created to access AWS S3. Click Data Catalyst manages what data each user gets to see through a system of roles, groups, and access privileges. These access controls can be easily synchronized with data and file access controls provided by HDFS and Hive. Next, we specify the name of the new data entity, point to the source file on AWS S3, and generate the file's data format and column definitions that we will need to onboard this data. The Click Data Catalyst connectors automatically collect and add metadata from the source into the Smart Data Catalog. Or, if no metadata is available to describe the data, you can provide it or it can be inferred from the data itself. So now that we've defined a new set of supplier data, our next step is to actually load the data values into the Smart Data Catalog and data collection. When Click Data Catalyst onboards data, it automatically performs a series of data conversions, standardization, validation, and profiling steps. It also processes new data through its rules engine to identify, flag, and act on potentially important patterns in that data. Together, these steps ensure that all data managed by Click Data Catalyst is accurate, complete, and thoroughly documented. We can see that the load job finished successfully. It contains 736 rows of data, each specifying supplier data for a particular product. 723 rows were good, meaning they perfectly matched the expected record format and data type. But 13 records had some problems. Let's see what those problems were. It appears the fields such as item name, buyer city, and vendor name have some records with unexpected non-ASCII and control characters. It's possible that we could clean up those bad records using our data preparation module, then reload the data again, 
and all of the records would then be described as good. Let's take a closer look at the data we just loaded. During the onboarding process, Click Data Catalyst builds a statistical profile for each field of data. This information is added into the Click Data Catalyst Smart Data Catalog and made available to users via the user interface, as you can see here. This automatic data profiling, combined with record validation, ensures that all data coming into the Smart Data Catalog is always quality controlled, well documented, and transparent to users. Now, this entity can be used in a data preparation job, added to a data set, and published for use with ClickSense and other analytical tools and platforms. The Click Data Catalyst Prepare module is where you create custom data preparation jobs called data flows. Let's take a look at an existing data flow named CRM 2017 Total Year in our Data Flow Designer. Data flows transform and augment existing data entities into new sets of data entities with specific formatting and content that you need. For example, this data flow combines four separate files with quarterly sales data. We can see there are four input files, union operators, and connectors defining the flow of data between objects. We can look at the sample data as well as the profile data for each file. In this example, we've already configured the union operators. A union operator creates an entity from source entities that have identical data structures, which are then combined to create a single target. Now, let's sort the resulting combined data set using a sort operator. When the sort operator is connected from the union's output port, we can see the field values to sort by are now populated. I'll choose to sort this new entity of data by the create date for each order record. Now we can write the resulting data to a new data entity into a new target and give it the name CRM 2017 All Orders. As you execute this job, Click Data Catalyst is dynamically generating script or code. In this case, we're running it in MapReduce to execute this process. The code is being pushed down to run natively on the underlying Big Data Data Storage Processing layer. Please note that everything that Click Data Catalyst is doing is based on open standards and is non-proprietary. New files of data resulting from the data flow are created in Hive and registered with HDFS as well within the Click Data Catalyst Smart Data Catalog. We now see that the data flow has finished successfully. So let's take a look at the result. So here you will see the new data file. We've just merged four files of quarterly sales data into one file that includes all orders for 2017, sorted by the create date. But what if you needed some additional data that wasn't already loaded into Click Data Catalyst's Smart Data Catalog for your project. To access that data, you're going to need to onboard a new data set into Click Data Catalyst. And that's what we're going to do next. The Data Catalyst Catalog is an interactive marketplace dashboard that provides immediate insight and actions on entities across your data ecosystem. Here you can see all the data entities that are part of the Click Data Catalyst catalog. Every tile represents a different entity or table of data. These entities were either onboarded into the catalog from an enterprise data source or created directly through Click Data Catalyst data preparation jobs. You can filter by data set, tag, source, or keyword to locate what you need. In this case, we're looking for data related to global sales. Now we're looking at just those entities associated with this keyword, global. As you load, work with, and explore data in Click Data Catalyst, it collects and creates a rich layer of metadata that describes each entity, 
which is used in various operations and modules. This makes the data easier to find, understand, trust, and use. For example, this entity, named Global Sales 2017, was last loaded from the Global Sales Data Source system into Click Data Catalyst on January 11th, with 237 rows of data and 28 fields of information. You can see that three KPI performance scores derived from Click Data Catalyst metadata describe this entity in terms of operational, data quality, and popularity measures. These KPIs help the user understand if the data is meeting its business objectives, is at risk, or needs attention, or if it's not being used at all, just to name a few. The global sales entity for 2017 has some decent scores. It shows a moderate degree of popularity and quality. Let's take a closer look. Now we can see more about this data. We can see a business name and description and tags, which were added to the data either by a person, like a data governance expert, or by the Click Data Catalyst Intelligent Rules Engine. There are 28 fields of data for each record in this table, and we can see several statistical profile values describing each field. You can also look at the distribution of values for each field, or you can look at sample data. This entity contains detailed order data that we're going to need for our project. Let's put it in our cart. Now let's add sales data for the other two years in our cart. Once you've selected one or more entities, there are a few things you can do with them. You can make them into a new data set or add them to an existing data set. You can explore the data or publish it, or you can use it as input to a data preparation job. That's what we're going to do next.